somehow whoever i don't know who told him this is a good idea but for whatever reason someone told this guy it was a good idea to commission a host of his family and friends to get on camera and basically congratulate him for a special he hasn't yet done or hasn't been put out to the public yet very bizarre video um maybe in the same way he tried to it, maybe it's something similar he tried to copy from schultz right schultz has got that clip that he put out where he basically um he's no i think yeah his team surprised him by showing him i think he's i think he's first watching the pre, the, the kind of um what would you call it the compilation or recap video from his radio city musical sold out tour then at the end of it there's like a section where he kind of talks about you know falling in love with new york and has contributed to him and his career and blah 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 and they put they put it together like a, a good little sizzle reel that i guess he had no knowledge of and he kind of got taken aback but it got a bit emotional but again that's like a what six thousand cap venue you know he was a guy who you know legitimately was just doing you know podcasting stuff with charlemagne there was a point in time where he nearly got kicked off britain the idiots he had the beef with Joe Budden. He's had a cup, even though he's come from, you know, affluent family, it doesn't really matter. But in terms of career wise, he's had a very up and down career. And in the last few years, it felt like he's absolutely skyrocketed into the stratosphere, right? He's super successful. He took that one Joe Rogan appearance chance and absolutely went to the moon with it. So you can understand why, you know, maybe tearing up at that expense makes kind of some sense, especially considering he maybe got knockbacks on Netflix and they come back again and they say, yeah, blah, blah. But to cry the way this man is crying now on camera, I'm going to show you. For a video that you know has already been produced, he probably saw it himself beforehand. Maybe a couple of bits of it, but certainly something that he, you know, kind of put out there to his team to go and compile the footage and put it together in a compilation. It's just bizarre. I don't know what this is. Is this a kind of a ploy to get sympathy? Is this a genuine thing, which is even more disturbed? This is akin to somebody turning on their selfie camera, and, you know, and basically crying into it, you know, in response to a really tragic family event or something. But yeah, let's play it. So one more thing, Brennan. The team and I have been working on some stuff for the last few weeks. Yeah. He's super emotional anyway for the entire show for whatever reason. Let's see. To surprise you with. So I'll just play it for you. No way. Brendan, I think right now is the time that I tell you how proud I am of you. But the real word is impressed. Looking back at when you and I were in the gym together and trying to train to go on and be cage fighters to where you are now with your second Comedy special coming out, man. I got to tell you, this is awesome. Congratulations. What's up, buddy? Um, congratulations. Is Brian Callen topless in this video? <laughs> and why does his nose look absolutely gigantic? Look, let's just be let's just be kind of safe here and be kind of sensible and not poke fun at every little thing. Is this a good thing in general? Probably, right? Most of these guys spend way too much time looking at people that don't like them and listening to what they have to say and not not, spend, not spending enough time actually focusing in, on people that actually do like their content. So, so, pardon me. So maybe it's nice to sometimes get an opportunity to sit there and actually have people give you, you know, lavish praise and tell you how awesome you are because for the most part, you know, the most kind of content or feedback you receive coming back at you is mostly negative in that kind of sense of the word right that makes any sense but in general this is really lame like ultra lame what are you do like what is this who is this meant to curry favor like who does this serve just him probably do you know what i mean it's like it's such a weird thing because you'd imagine being an entertainer you're kind of not you you're not, you're not on the you're kind of your role or your job is basically to service your audience to service your crowd your fans whatever they may be and then maybe you come second with the stuff that you enjoy in terms of going to fancy places, eating out, meeting new people, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of the content you create, it's mostly to service your fans and obviously to allow you to live the life that you allow you want to live. But these clips, like, well, who do they actually serve? Like, who's benefiting from this? You know, of course, I guess it's opportunity for the people featured in it to wax themselves off because, you know, this is a good sign that you're in these good graces when you're featured on here. It's a good thing for him to have people outwardly in the business come out and say hey we support you we like what you're doing even though some of these people don't really say you know that they just talked about him as a person which is you know it's good but you kind of want the respect of your peers too in terms of what you actually do but i, I don't know this is really bizarre man very very odd gringo poppy it's pretty cool your second special you took your time on the 
doesn't even call it the right name. It's called the Gringo Pappy, not Gringo Pappy. But anyway, we continue. This one. Um, you know, I um, the, the, there's a I was scrolling through Instagram and uh, there's this guy working out. And there, this this you know he's doing something, and uh, the voiceover says, "People aren't proud of you. They're just surprised you keep making shit happen." You ever think about that? And I thought to myself, no, I'm not surprised you keep making shit happen. I'm just proud of you. That's a big difference. I'm proud of you because I know, I mean, this has been a motherfucker. And I think in the uh, darkest two years that we've met, we, I mean, for us anyway, that we've met since we've met. For us? You mean for you, mate? <laughs> You're the one that got, <laughs> that got accused of the R word, mate. He he was holding. To be fair to Brendan, man, he held that fort. He held the fort down brilliantly, and according to him, you know, depending on who you believe, he also was the one that was giving Brian money from the show. Still, Jeremy, you know I mean? whatever he gets, you know, in terms of the split, he was still giving it to him through that entire time he was going through his uh, R word allegation controversy and whatnot. <laughs> The most stress he probably had was figuring out whether or not he should fire Malik and Chappelle or just fire one or keep one. Like, that's the most stress he went through. But Brian, Brendan was perfectly fine. He bought a fucking Ferrari in a pandemic, mate. He's lovely. Brian's the one that had all the issues. Uh, you kept kicking the sandbag down the road. And uh, here we are. You did the special. It's very exciting. I remember when you texted me and you said, I'm just really excited because I captured on camera what I've been working for. And, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You're the toughest guy I know. And I love watching you take a leadership role. I love watching what you've built and what you continue to build. I love, I love the fact that you are becoming um, <laughs> somebody who's becoming more compassionate, more loving, more understanding. As you can tell that to, tell that to you, Nix, mate. Tell that to Unix. I don't think Unix has got the compassion that's loving side of Brendan for that lawsuit. My man put out some um, unfounded rumors or story, allegedly, you know, based on some live stream that he saw about maybe someone doing something they shouldn't have done on camera and then got hit with a flipping lawsuit. I don't think that's very loving. <laughs> that's the opposite of loving. Female comedians coming out with a story that they didn't even name anyone in and getting threatened with flipping lawsuits. That also isn't loving. This is probably my, this might be one of the worst promos I've ever seen for a special, actually, lead up to it. Imagine, like, you know, maybe it's not him in both stories, but it's very interesting. And also, the eye surgery for Brian didn't work, did it? Get older, and as you get more successful, I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's the definition of a leader. I think you're embracing <laughs> your best side, your best self, and uh... this is all that bullshit actor talk he got given when he was coming up in the sin industry, isn't it? Like, what does this all mean? Just empty platitudes, isn't it? Leader, respect, and this, and it. it this feels like one of those instant you could tell man mind spent a lot of time watching those random instagram reels in it motivational clips where they're just saying a whole bunch of nothing or, you know with some really inspiring music like dun, 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 you know that sort of stuff and it's just like empty words someone will do a press up with rock hard abs someone running up a hill it's like what like tell me how to run up that hill first like what app should i use what should i eat like give me more information <laughs> do you know what i mean and I love you. I love you for um, being there for me. Yeah, I bet you do, you mate. Know, probably the Bloody. darkest, not probably, but definitely the darkest time of my life. He's smiling like a psychopath. <laughs> Brian's the best, bro. Brian's a... <laughs> the thing my man's gone for, and he's still smiling. You've got to give that guy props, man. But you were always there, man. Is that a smile or is that just darkness behind the eyes? I don't know. Leave some comments in the in the in the, in the leave, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, please. I think you've been a leader in this fucking whole thing because you were just like fuck all these people and circle the wagons. So, what can I say, my friend? I'm not surprised. I'm just proud. That would have been a good name for his second special. You'd be surprised, and I'm not surprised. That'd be pretty decent. Like I'm still here, motherfuckers. I'm not surprised. Like put your balls on the table. Jeremy, you, know I mean? you said what you want about me. You got all these haters out here trolling me, Cheeto finger people, you know, basement dweller. What's someone call me? Bottom, bottom, bottom feeders, bottom feeders like me healers out here. That should have been a real one. Like I'm not surprised. Here, boom, balls on the table. You can't do what I do. You wish you were me. You wish you drove what I drove. You wish you had the house that I had. You wish you had the friends that I had. Suck this. 
that would have been a real mark. Do you know what I mean? But instead we get what? Like hacky Mexican family jokes. Like, like did this would have been fine if you like, they just met each other, but they've been together for years and it maybe like a decade. They've got like two kids. So cool. <laughs> this Mexican stuff doesn't make any sense. I'm excited as well. All right. What's up, Mr. Thick Boy himself? I want to congratulate you on your second special, Gringo Poppy. I'm excited to see it, man. Good luck and congratulations. <laughs> Brendan Schaub, it's your boyfriend, Jeff Dye. Very proud of you, buddy. Two specials. I've got zero. You already have two. That just shows that you're a better worker and you're funnier and you're better and stronger and you can beat people up and more hands. Well, actually, I'll take handsome. I'll take handsome. But anyways, I'm proud of you. I love you, brother. Uh, go crush it. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to watch it. Hopefully, I'll watch it with you. Good work. Didn't you, just make, didn't you just meet that man recently? Or is that like an old friend? Why would somebody that you don't know? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. What's up, Big B? Damn, I got dandruff. Dang, boy. That shit is big. Why is he sobbing so much? <laughs> Honestly, is there anything in, like, even as a fan, is there anything in this video that makes you want to sob, like, legitimately? This isn't like, um, a two-year project that you've known about that he's doing on his own. That'd be one thing. Oh, I've been slogging away. No one will take my special and I'm just doing it on my own. I'm hoping it's successful. Because there was no pit of humility throughout this entire process either. It wasn't like he came out and said, hey, everyone rejected me and I'm going to just put it on my own. I'm hoping the fans are going to back me and watch it in their droves. Even people I don't like, just watch it and let me know what you think and I'm going to try and build from that. There was no nothing. It was just, oh, let me lie about everyone putting in bids. And then say, we're going to put it out later on. It's like, what? We know that didn't happen, brother. We know. And now my man's sobbing, like legitimately sobbing. <laughs> I haven't cracked since 1992, mate. I don't know why, man. That's crazy. Oh, let me just play this. I swear to God, this is hilarious. Big too, huh? Looks like my dandruff has been doing coke, boy. Um, What's up, player? I'm at my grandmother's house right now, but... uh. Just chilling, man. About to grill up some oysters, actually. Um, just wanted to say what's up. Oh, wanted to say this, man. Congratulations on the special, baby. Way to get it done, baby. Gang, gang, love, love. I'm not one to calculate stuff, did, but did Theo Vaughn spend more minutes doing a dandruff bit than he did congratulating my man for his special? Classic. What's up, Sting? I'm proud of you. It's your second special, and it's going to do great things for you. I know a lot of people will see it. You've been working really hard. You should be really proud of yourself. I'm going to keep this short because I know a lot of guys are saying congratulations, but congratulations. And also, congratulations to the podcast. It's, uh, it's everywhere, you get, everywhere you get podcasts. Proud of you, bro. Yo, B, what's up, man? Uh, Paul Verzi here, and I just wanted to congratulate you, brother. On your second special, the Gringo Poppy. Uh, wish you all the best with it. Getting one is one thing, but doing two is another. So congratulations again, man. All the best, and uh, I'll see you. b Shop, congratulations on your second special. Here's to 17, 18, 19, and 20 more. Tell the haters to suck your big brown baby. Yeah, he should have done that. He should have 100% done that. Coming from somebody else is a bit dumb, but slapping people with lawsuits and whatnot it's just look i can't do this anymore this is just this is just too much i i like my man's sobbing over like two specials and you got some money hey what up shop i just wanted to uh, say congrats on your special let's see what griffin had to say that moment you so what did you say what do you say what's up brandon my friend um damn i don't even know what to say but ever since the way Eric changed his tune about Brendan, the scene, the moment the man must like cutting him checks is funny, isn't it? But it's also understandable. I mean, he's a grown man, he's an adult, he's got a family, he's probably going to get married soon, I'd imagine, maybe have kids. It is what it is, the pandemic times, if someone comes through and wants to offer you a check for sitting down on the couch and shooting the shit on a show like King of the Sting, fair enough, even though you got kicked off and then brought back on, which I might want to take some credit for, even though I was way off base and I said he wasn't going to come back because they didn't think he was, you know, big time enough. He did end up coming back, which is, you know, credit to him. I took the L on that one. But still, 
the way he kind of now openly cucks for flipping Brendan is really hilarious, man. Considering how on the fence and I won't say on the fence, how how obviously how blatantly um ambivalent he was to his presence in comedy and now all of a sudden like i said he cuts him a check and he's you know giving me a consistent bit of exposure on the show tune always changes it is what it is isn't it but it's just hilarious but let's hear what you have to say about him since i made fun of you at the improv because i was like what is this ufc fighter doing thinking he could do comedy and since that moment you've proven to be a person that attacks everything that you do with the same sort of energy to be successful you got a an energy that that's why your fans love you. That's why people want to be around you. That's why people like working with you. That's why people work hard for you. It's because of you. It's because of <laughs> what you have in your heart. <laughs> oh man. Well, I've never heard a bigger bunch of bullshit in my life, but let's continue in your soul. I truly appreciate that. I admire the work that you've done and look at you now two specials in releasing another one right now. It's uh, it's great, man. I like how everyone's just saying the amount he's releasing, the success for the hardware. No one's talking about funnies. Like, let's talk about the funnies. Isn't it meant to be a funny? Like, what is this? Maybe that's the whole, maybe, again, maybe there is no definitive way to judge a special. Maybe, like, all art, um, the way you judge it is subjective. Like, you know, one person can like this contemporary artist. One person can like this performance artist. One person can like this sculpture. And you can basically see different things in different pieces of work and think this is more worthy of being in the gallery. This is more worthy of being in a museum and vice versa. Cool. But you would assume the fact that it's a comedy special and it's on video and you're on a stage with a microphone in your hand, you kind of want to get as many laughs as you can per second or minute, however you judge a comedy special, or however you judge yourself, right? You go off the stage, you're like, oh, I crushed today. Why? Because everyone was laughing. When you don't crush, everyone walks out, or you don't get any response. Cool. So you would hope that every special that you do, there's a marked improvement in the response that you get when you're on stage, or when people watch it, they're like, oh my God, you've really improved. The first special was trash, and now you're better. It's like when you watch them, um, What's that show, that thing he does? Um, uh, what's his face? Uh, what's his bloody name? Where they get on stage and tell jokes. You know what I'm talking about. The one that jo um, that, that Tony Hinchcliffe does, right? That joke show. I forgot what it's called. Part of the reason why that's really cool is and amazing is that you get all these really up-and-coming people putting their names in the hat to go on stage and get some time. Some of them come on other shows too, and you see the improvement. If they've been going to do open mics and just, you know, working and doing what it needs to be done to get, you know, to get the funny levels up again. You see an improvement from when they were first on to maybe another episode they're on again. And it's cool to watch their journey. Maybe you follow them on Instagram, you see them again. And then you want to see them in your town, they put a special out, whatever. You want to see just constant improvement. Oh, yeah, it's getting more special. Okay, maybe it's not as funny as the last one, but he at least he's trying new things. Man, man, just they're all talking about hustle, about the second special. Like, and again, is it... You're recording a video. Has there ever been a time where it's easier to record something than nowadays? From the equipment to the people who can use it in terms of freelancers, um, to where you can post it in terms of getting it out to the most people, like um, distribution and whatnot, um, marketing material, access to other bits and bobs like billboards and stuff, companies that you can use that can basically get that stuff done for you. This has been the easiest time ever in the history, I guess, of entertainment to create any piece of content and get it out there. So this idea that just having two, just for the number of two, is, is a big achievement. is a bit bizarre. And also, it, it's a weird back, backhanded compliment. Like, everyone's congratulating you on your hard work, but you have tried to, you know, make a work of art. Like, let's, go, let's talk about the art, maybe. I don't know. Maybe because they hadn't seen it. I don't know. Who knows? It's great. I'm proud of you. I'm older than you, so I could be proud of, proud of you. And I appreciate you bringing me into your fold uh, with the King and the Sting crew and everybody and um, you know, it's a testament to you as a person and congratulations. And I can't wait to see what happens next. What up, boy? Just want to say congrats. <laughs> He's probably gets on camera. <laughs> he completely loses it. <laughs> oh. As if my man just came back from war. Like, you know those uh, soldiers that come back from war and then they go and hug their daughters or kids or wives and whatnot and they're walking through the door. Oh, my God, I haven't seen your daddy in ages. Yeah, cool. He just went, you know, he's just been on the tour assassinating flipping <laughs> defenseless Afghanis and whatnot, but whatever. Um, They come back, right? And it's like, oh, sick, amazing. That's something that's going to get, it's a bit of a cheer joke. It gets me sometimes, but 
My my man, that's just you know the guy. He works for you, doesn't he? Isn't he on tour every time they go on tour doing the flipping merch the stuff or handling his bookings or whatever it is? Like he doesn't live in. He's not like he's he's based in Japan or something. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Again, I haven't cried since nineteen ninety two, so maybe I'm the wrong person to judge this sort of stuff on. Congrats on the special. Really proud of you getting it out there. It's going to be really good. Um, nothing's been more fun than uh, touring this with you for the past year or so. And yeah, let's just keep it going. Hey, Boo, me and the boys. Um, we just wanted to let you know that we are super proud of you, um, especially me. I am so proud of everything that you have accomplished, everything you've done, all the years that we've been together, the family that we have built. Um, I'm just... I'm really proud of you and the boys are too. Um, Tiger, do you want to say something to your daddy? I hope you have a good show. Love you. He hopes you have a good show. Bassi, do you want to say something to your papa? Uh-huh. Say good luck. He won't. I love you, daddy. Oh, daddy. All right, no comment in the, on the family things. Fantastic, you're doing so great. You surrounded yourself with some really good people who really have been able to help you to be successful at doing this. I know I'm very excited to see it, and I know that Deborah wants to see it as well. I'm sure all your fans do. You're doing really, really great, and I absolutely love uh, all that you've accomplished. I'm sure this will be the first one of many more. Love you, buddy. Bye. What more can I say, man? Um, weird clip. My man's putting a stand. I don't know. I don't know what this is meant to be doing. I really, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, yeah. Let, let me know your thoughts down below what you thought of this session, of this clip, this whole thing. Does it make sense to you? Does it not make sense to you? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, apart from that, I'm going to end it here and I'll see you on the other end for some more updates regarding this whole shebang very soon. Peace.